25 years ago, my mother died. She was living with Alzheimer's. She was a nice mother. She was modest, beautiful, considerate. And I could not believe she turned into that restless, annoyed, and unhappy woman she was in the last year. The images of her face, her changing features reflecting the alteration of her character, stayed in my mind. Sometimes I could, I could look at her as her son, and I felt so sorry for her. And sometimes I could look at her as an artist, fascinated by the strange expressions on her face. At the same time, I felt almost ashamed considering her as a subject for a painting. When I visited her in the old people's home, I saw her sitting there behind closed doors, locked up in herself, and she suddenly appeared to be a member of a society of patients, and that shocked me. She was surrounded by sleeping and wandering spirits. And I saw her sitting there, and she said to me, there's a fog in my head. And I'm so scared that I will disappear into that fog. And besides that, there's a man on the telly. Every day he's on the telly. I cannot understand his name, but I think he's a, he's a quiz master on the Wheel of Fortune. He's a stupid guy, but I cannot understand him anymore. And that frightens me. Well, that she was changing frightened me, and that I was slowly losing her confuses me. And I was wondering if I could follow her on her way to the unknown. Well, many, many years later, the images of her face were still etched in my mind. And I knew I have to go back to the old people's home where she lived. And so I did. It was a Saturday, the sun was shining, and I found myself in the corridor, and the sign said, room number two. And when I was finally about to enter the room, I was so scared. Scared to death going in there and seeing it all over again. But I pulled myself together. I entered the room saying, good morning. Silence. I didn't know what to do. So I sat down on a chair in the corner of the room, just looking around. And I saw seven people. Some of them were sitting in a wheelchair, others were pacing up and down, staring into space. And suddenly, there she was. White hair, blue eyes, a fine network, wrinkles, smiling at me. So I introduced myself, told her about my mom, and I asked permission to draw her portrait. She only slightly nodded. So I grabbed my pencil to make a quick sketch of her. And when I was sketching, she was still looking at me. She captivated me with her beautiful eyes still smiling. She made me blush. I mean, normally when I draw a portrait of someone, then there are some unspoken rules. Well, let's say you, you give me a commission to draw your portrait. Well, then I'm permitted to observe you, to observe you closely. And you pretend that you're not aware of my presence. That's the game. But Femi, that's her name, she broke the rules. She was observing me while I was drawing her.
As I said, she made me shy. I couldn't concentrate. So finally, I dropped my pencil, and I started smiling at her. And so we were smiling for the longest 10 minutes of my life. But after these 10 minutes, I could sketch and I could smile at the same time. She appeared to be aphasic. She had no words and she used a different language. I wanted just to draw her, but she wanted to meet me. So she, Femi, taught me that portraying someone is meeting someone. And that's a good lesson for an artist. When I showed her the result, she grabbed my hand, and that was her way to say goodbye. And I went back to my studio, and I started this huge portrait of her. And it appeared to be the first of a series of portraits. The second in line was Eltio. Eltio had decided to close his eyes day and night. And only when I said, Eltio, won't you have a cup of coffee? He reluctantly opened his eyes and he looked around with such a frown on his face that I thought, okay, he's, he's already somewhere else. And that's how I wanted to portray him, a man who already said goodbye to this world. When I saw Andrea's face, I wasn't sure if it was correct in this situation to paint her. So much pain, so far away, but on the other hand, so beautiful and not a common beauty, but a vulnerable and precious kind of beauty. When I saw Andrea's face, it was if I was looking at my mother's face in her last days. And then I suddenly realized what I was doing. All these expressions, all these faces together formed one huge, complex portrait of my mother's face. And this knowledge brought me back to my own family story. And I saw her standing there, the ivy drip swinging beside her hip, her underpants on her feet, screaming and yelling at my father, using all words and terms she never took in her mouth. My father was shocked. And I could only think, come on, Dad, she took care of you the last 40 years, maybe. Now it's your turn. I could only blame him for not giving her what she needed. But thanks to the stories told by the relatives of Femi, Elcio, Andrea, and all the others, I know now that I was too hard on my dad. He lost the woman he loved. And maybe I was too hard on myself. My mother disappeared into that fog. Anyway, the two of us, me and my dad, we were not able to handle it. And that's why I am so happy I got the opportunity to go back to the old people's home. Because looking closely at all these people unified my fear, my pain, my fascination, into a strong feeling of compassion. Compassion was the ones I portrayed, was their vulnerable faces, was their changed behaviors. I painted people in transition. Like Femi, she wasn't the woman she used to be, but when her husband saw her portrait, he said, what a lovely girl she is. You painted the woman she is, 
and the woman she was. It was if he could look at her in a new way. And the people I portrayed forced me to rely on my own vision. I had to get rid of, I had to get rid of all my biases. And it sounds easy, but for me it was hard work. And my wife said, looking with compassion to all these people makes you a nicer person. Femi, Elcio, Andrea, and all the others, they were living behind closed doors. And they were not able to express themselves in our world. So I hope that these portraits will tell their stories and keep their stories alive, stories about people in transition. And I think that's important because we all change. We all constantly change. And we also all would like to be acknowledged. That's what we desire, don't we? So I hope these portraits will tell you that it's worth looking closely and attentively and with compassion to the ones you love. Thank you.